let me get it to the. OK, so again, I'm, I'm Gordon Kranz, president of CPM. Um, we this is uh, one of a series of transatlantic uh, collaboration that I, we've been doing with uh, EVA uh, run by Steve Wake um, in the UK. He he does one week and then CPM does the next. And this is our week um, at the end of this. We'll uh, give uh, give Steve just a, a short minute to tell you about what's happening next week. So. Um, a couple of things on the CPM front, um, you know, it, it's old news, but EVM World in November uh, has been canceled, but we are uh, scheduling um, uh, a PEP training. Uh, it's the scheduled training, exact details of, of times and that sort of thing. We did send out an early, um, you know, teaser that says it's coming, but it's mid-November. Our, our vision is, is that next year we've got five tracks that over the course of the year we would put on um, uh, each of the five tracks so that individuals uh, who wanted to go through that training uh, could get it done within a year and, and get their, you know, their little certs uh, for each of the tracks. In December, we're uh, going to be kicking off uh, what we call a champions series, which is really our series of workshops. Uh, 2022 for CPM is really going to be all about virtual. Uh, we're going to have uh, at least monthly, uh, if not more, uh, small little micro sessions, uh, either training or champion series or, you know, other things that come up. So then there's going to be all kinds of opportunities to volunteer and help. Um, and, and we're hoping that we uh, that this is going to provide uh, additional value to our to our membership. So. All right, so why don't we go ahead and start? So so this here one is about uh, EVM and technical measures. Um, I, I've got a long history of, of, of touting. Um, you know, we, we we as EV analysts don't tend to talk very much detail about what does it mean to collect technical uh, progress um, and and have it mean anything. Uh, so that the, the EV data and the technical status is generally telling us the same thing about the health uh, of the program. So uh, this is this is a discussion uh, to try to get, uh, you know, to try to give you some thoughts from my perspective and then also to try to get your perspective. So the first thing I want to say is is in and some of these are, you know, just introductory slides, so to speak, but um, a lot of times people get caught up in the fact that there's a, a set of tasks that have to happen that you collect progress from the schedule. And when that task is done, the you know, the the feeling is, is OK, well, I'm 100 percent, but because I, I, I performed the task um, and so I'm 100 percent done. So in, uh, instead of measuring what what people do, let's measure what the result of what people do. So, for example, OK, you did the task. But did it accomplish what you had intended it to accomplish? And so that's the aspect of of this whole uh, trying to not directly relate, but uh, relate the other um, technical domains and, and how do they measure progress and then try to figure out uh, how that uh, progress relates to the earned value progress, that sort of thing. But again, measuring not we're not measuring. Hey, we spent a week doing something. We're measuring. We spent a week and we were able to make this decision, for example. And you know, integrated performance management, as we all know, is it's it's uh, it's integrated, right? And so um, everybody has a say in uh, how the end of the program should end, um, and everybody you know needs to have some compromise, you know. So it, it's it's a balance, and the program manager has to figure out, okay, how do I satisfy all of these different entities uh, and and what their requirements are, and yet still deliver uh, the scope that's going to help uh, achieve the user's needs. And then let me give you a, st a silly example. Um, so uh, security. Um, I don't know if we have any security experts out there, but what is the most secure system in the world? That's not rhetorical. <laughs> Anybody? Probably one that's not connected to anything. <laughs> exactly. One that's not connected to anything. OK, so from a security perspective, hey, I'm you know, I'm not going to leak any data because it's not connected to anything. 
Well, guess what? It doesn't do anything either, right? So, so you have to figure out well, what risk am I willing to accept in that environment and how do I balance the actual technical scope and provide some capability and yet, um, you know, stay secure enough, you know, that kind of thing. So, I mean, that was, you know, being facetious, but I mean, if any one of these aspects, if we only took it from their perspective, you know, a good example is earned value management um, regulations, right? If we're only concerned about the mechanics of earned value from a compliance perspective and we don't look at what's the impact to um, to program management, well, we're, we're, we're likely going to be looking at the wrong things and then we're, and we're likely going to negatively affect um, how uh, program management uh, had it. So again, it's a balance and so. Um, so again, this is just another iteration is, is that, you know, you, you, you go through your planning process uh, to create a schedule and a technical plan, you assign resources and all that kind of stuff. And then your resource loaded plan basically um, turns into your uh, BCWS, uh, your performance measurement baseline. And so the thing I want you to think about is that these, these tasks in the schedule represent cost in this BCWS. Somewhere along that line is are these uh, resources are being expended. And these resources are being expended for a purpose, either to mature uh, a technical performance parameter, um, you know, uh, to mature the design, um, create a capability. And so uh, it's important that these tasks accomplish what they're supposed to accomplish for you to be able to collect 100% performance, um, you know, uh, against when you're when you're doing earned value. So again, I think I've emphasized that. I mean, are there any questions about what I'm the, the point? Because it, this is a critical point as I go forward is, is that these tasks come from the technical team in order to mature their technical product or 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 technical, you know, um, maturity um, and and there's a purpose. Go ahead, question. All right. OK, so I guess everybody gets it, so cool. All right, well, let's go back up to key performance parameters because um, that was one of the things that I had promised I was going to talk about. Um, and remember, this is a discussion oriented thing, so I purposely uh, cut my slides down to about a 20 minute thing so that we can have some good conversation. But uh, but key performance parameters, um, you know, are very high level system capabilities that uh, a system must meet uh, to meet its operational goals. Uh, in some cases, um, you know, I don't know if you're an agile person or not, but there's, all, there's typically an MVP, you know, a minimum viable product. You know, hey, what does the system have to do in order for it to at least be fieldable, you know, that's kind of thing. Those would have to relate to KPPs. KPPs are things like transportability, sustainability, um, uh, interoperability, you know, can it talk to other systems and that sort of thing. Um, and then KSAs are uh, attributes or characteristics, you know, that are essential um, for a balanced solution, but they're not quite as critical as the KPP. And so let me give you an example. So a KPP um, uh, transportability, right? So in order, and, and the KPP might say something like, it needs to be um, the, this, uh, this set of equipment needs to be transportable by a C-130, um, you know, from, from this theater to that theater within, you know, a certain number of hours or something, whatever, or days or whatever. Okay, well, underneath that, well, there are probably weight constraints that have to get allocated to each one of those system components so that that whole set of components can fit within a C-130. So, you know, the, the high level thing is transportable. The lower level thing may be, um, you know, weight um, or, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's portability on, on wheels or, you know, so a little bit more detailed kind of thing um, that help you meet that higher level requirement. And uh, some other information, you know, capability development document, you know, is where you would document those. And, and this is traditionally, right? So, I mean, some of this stuff is changing as we adapt our acquisition uh, pathways and, and that sort of thing. But, but this is, is grounded in some good system engineering thought. Um, and, and by the time you get down through KSS, then you get down to like TPMs, technical measures of progress. And, and the reason that I'm 
going to uh, uh, dwell on that is because I, I've got uh, a bit more of a detailed example that I'd like to walk through the related to technical uh, performance measures. Uh, but again, you know, I think the important thing here is, is that the, the system engineers or design engineers, they measure, they, they develop these technical performance measures uh, to balance cost schedule performance. Um, and they actually have a planned versus actual um, throughout the development process. And so it's kind of like a BCWS, but they're not tracking cost and schedule. They're tracking where am I at with assessing that particular requirement? And, and I'll show you uh, what I mean by that here in, in a little bit. Again, a little bit more about technical parameters. I mean, and again, you know, us EV geeks, you know, there's a achieved to date, uh, a current estimate, you know, different milestones at which you measure, um, you know, the, the TPM, there's a planned value, um, a planned performance prof profile, and, you know, in more detailed TPMs, there's tolerance bands, you know, control limits, that sort of thing, thresholds for what you're, you know, the uh, minimal acceptable. Um, and then there's variances, you know, as you're as you're developing a, a product or, or developing software, um, there's measures as to whether you're achieving, um, you know, that uh, that threshold, that sort of thing. Uh, I, I like to relate this. I mean, it, you know, without talking about technical parameters, this looks a lot like, you know, our cost schedule, um, you know, burn downs and that sort of thing. So let, let's walk through a, 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 and, and let's just use weight, for example. Um, so a threshold, so, you know, I don't know, 50 pounds, let's say we're measuring a box, uh, an electronic box, and it needs to, uh, by the time it's designed and built, it needs to be 50 pounds. But during the development process, here's a planned profile. So if, if at this point in time, I estimate that my, the weight of that box is, um, say, at this point, it's below this planned profile, but it's still above the, the threshold, it's it's not a concern to me because a, typically at early on in the program, a lot of the estimates are based on um, future things like, you know, an expected COTS product that's not available yet, but you expect it to be and, and you're thinking it's, you know, that piece of it's going to weigh this or it's a, a piece that's yet to be designed or, or the material hasn't been finalized, uh, just the functionality. And so your current estimates are really based on a lot of uh, theory and guesswork sort of thing. So it's okay to have a tolerance, a, a variance, um, you know, and then, then you do a current estimate in this case, but it's okay to have a technical variance below this line, you know, and still you're still on plan kind of thing, because this tells me as long as I'm within this envelope, the technical tasks that I'm executing are working. But if I have a current estimate that falls outside of that envelope, then that's telling me that the tasks that I've executed to, to date are not working. They're, they're not maturing this design to where I've got enough information to estimate the weight um, within this envelope. Um, and so then, you know, this, in my mind, this is a, a, a future indicator, right? Because typically what will happen is, is, is a, a system engineer or engineer will see this kind of thing. And what happens is it says, okay, well, I'm outside that boundary. Well, you know, what what is likely to need to occur uh, from an earned value perspective? Anybody? You're likely going to need to put more effort into it, right? Because the effort that you planned isn't working. So you're going to have to change that effort, uh, either put more effort or change the the kinds of things that you're doing. And so there's there, there's going to be an effect on the EV uh, plan uh, at some point. Well, let's just you know uh, estimate. Uh, take another estimate later. Um, and so you, you've you've applied some additional work. You're you're doing some things. So this work here is likely to have indicated in your EV reports that um, uh, likely an over cost, um, you know, you've spent more time, um, you know, that kind of thing, or maybe uh, you're not getting the schedule, you know, because you, you didn't get uh, some information when you wanted to, but, um, and again, but you, but at least you've shrunk your variance, right? And, and you're still outside of bounds. And so it's likely that this variance is one that 
would need to be explainable uh, to say, well, how how in the world am I going to get below this threshold? I'm starting to approach, um, you know, starting to go down the path and I'm still above it, but it's it's good information. OK, well, so then, you know, let's assume that, you know, the 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 technical plan is updated to again uh, either change out um, a COTS item, find a different material, um, you know, that sort of thing. And, and the next time you estimate, uh, you actually are, are a lot closer. Um, and you're within this envelope now. So in, in a sense, you're, you're kind of back on plan, but likely you had to spend some money to do that, right? And you knew you needed to spend some money all the way back here. Um, any questions about that? Uh, any comments? I'll, I'll okay. make a comment if, if no one else will, but carry on whoever else chipped in. No, no, that was it was me, I think. So go ahead. Um, well, uh, this is Shirley Thompson from, from um, Responsible Project Management Team, um, ex-IBM from way back when. Um, I thought it was really interesting and really exciting because some of the operational stuff will get focused on earlier. Um, but I can imagine there's lots of resistance to this because um, this is not the way people normally want to play the game. So it's like, how do you persuade them that it's good to consider operational stuff early on when they're not even sure something's viable? No, that that's a good question. So one one thing. Uh, one thing here is, is that system engineers are tracking this stuff, right? What they're not doing is relating it necessarily to earn value, right? Um, you know, hey, earn value is that cost schedule stuff over, you know, over there that those EV guys are tracking, that sort of thing. And, and, and so this is actually happening. And so there is a set of TPMs, there's a set of technical things that each of these technical domains track in their own window. Um, but some, a lot of times they don't look at other windows and, and understand, okay, well, how is this going to impact my cost or, or, you know, uh, how's it going to impact the overall system? Um, and so the thing that typically doesn't happen is the integrated view or the integrated, um, look at all these different, um, uh, aspects, um, yeah, it's, it's like you're creating some principles for the way you do business, which right. sounds really exciting. Yeah. Uh, okay. Any well, other well, comments? Yeah, yeah, Gordon. So looking at all of these, you know, and my perspective of this, and I like this, is that these are the kind of things that a program should be discussing in their PMRs. Because right. it's in the PMR that you bring together these disciplines and you say, okay, here's what the engineers are saying about these technical performance measures. Here's the EV. How are these tied in? You know, you really got to get everybody in the same room for all these separate, you know, entities to integrate them. Yes, exactly. Oh, good point. Look, hey, Gordon, here. this is Nick. Um, hey, Nick. Are, are you getting any feedback or are you receiving me okay? I'm no, we're uh, we're receiving you perfectly. All right, so you know we do this for some of our clients right now. Um, the difference is that you know they will have um, along your technical performance uh, plan, the line that you have there. Yes, they'll have, they'll have a range of acceptable right um, results at each of the milestones. Yes, and what, and what they'll do is they'll measure the probability of achieving the next milestone now okay you know this really goes back to the mbse programs right that they have in place the systems engineering program right and the tech and the technical documents so you know particularly with um some clients that are now dealing with uh program and contracting types where they're looking for innovation from industry and that is very heavily dependent upon technical performance and schedule right so one of the antecedent documents that they will put together to ensure that they haven't missed any of the tpms or kpps and so forth is an imp integrated right. master plan because yep. you want to you want to ensure that the incentives in the pws or the sal the various c drills are all captured a lot of, um, you know, we, what we found initially 
was that some organizations were doing things backwards where they would construct an IMS and then, you know, try to reconstruct an imp from their IMS or some sort of summary schedule, which really throws off your risk and uncertainty uh, yeah. evaluation, right, of the program. Yeah, no, I, that's a good point. So we were able to get in early um, to do this, but once you uh, have captured all that through the AMP and you have your major uh, milestones and events documented within your plan, then you can decompose um, the specific work that needs to be accomplished that go against the TPMs or the KPPs or the MOEs or the MOPs to the, to the scheduled task. So the schedule is driven by technical performance. And then you also tie the incentive payments that are part of the, you know, part of the contract to their ability to, you know, to perform. Because in some cases, you will not get to cost share until, you know, further, further along among your milestones. Right. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that, that, those are good points. Yeah, and it, 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 it sounds like you've actually uh, uh, leveraged, um, taken a look at, things from this point of view. I'd like to add to that IMP integrated master plan. And as Nick said, it's it's typically what you come up with first. You, you define your significant events and significant accomplishments, and it's very high level uh, decision points, milestones, uh, high level deliveries, and then you grow your schedule incrementally uh, from that. Um, and then at each of these uh, points, yeah, significant accomplishments or accomplishment criteria, there are um, definitions of done that would describe, um, hey, it, it, have I accomplished it? And in a lot of cases, it, those are described in terms of technical capability uh, that's estimated or, or actual at those points in time. Another thing that I'd like to, it, what's interesting is, is that in, in the Agile world, I've been supporting the Agile uh, programs for, uh, you know, for a while now. And one of the big things that they're struggling with is they don't do it because, oh, for God's sake, that's waterfall. Um, uh, Wendy, can you go on mute? And uh, but but they do have a roadmap. And so, you know, one of the programs that I was advising, you know, I said, you know, you still have to come up with high level um, decision points. Uh, there's there's certain demos that um, external demos that you need to support um, and there's you know certain capabilities that you need first that sort of thing at a high level um, you need to define that so that that can actually form the the, the priorities that you need in order to then um, further decompose the, the agile you know features and stories and that kind of stuff so you're working on the right stuff first um, and so that whole concept of upfront system engineering is uh, it's an important step, and 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 I agree, Nick, that things like TPMs are are, are and, and where they're currently at in this time phase will help provide some assessment as to whether you're on track with meeting your end uh, requirements or not. Any other comments? Okay, so what what I want to introduce here too is is that you know I'm sure there's a bunch of risk uh, experts out there as well, and this is just a simplified view of a particular risk. But what what happens is is you come up with a, a risk again early on in the program, and it's red, right? It says that hey, if if this risk turns into an issue, we're you know it's uh, that the impact is is just too high, so we have to do some mitigations, right? We need to create some actions. Um, uh, you know, that will bring this risk from uh, red to yellow uh, within this time frame, right? So that, that again, this is a time phase mitigation burn down strategy for, for risk. And at each, in between each of these things are a set of tasks associated with um, burning that risk down. And, you know, typically, you know, these tasks, you know, will end up in the earned value baseline through, you know, you go get some MR, uh, you you develop, you know, the set of tasks over this, you know, couple of months or whatever, you, you put it in the schedule, you work those tasks, and then you reassess the risk when those tasks are done. And and if if the reassessment of risk is, is actually lower, uh, those tasks worked. 
if it didn't work, well, then you're behind schedule, right? There, there's another early indicator that you're going to have to put more effort into burning that risk down. If you're below this, if this was actually down here, well, you're ahead of plan, right? Um, you know, that kind of thing. So it's the same sort of thing above this line. Um, any estimate above this line from your time phase plan shows, uh, you know, uh, an early indicator that you're likely going to have to burn some more uh, time uh, and money. Um, and below says that you're on track and, and you're doing fine. Um, and so, and this is actually my last slide and, and I'll walk through this and then let's have some good conversation. Um, so the, the point is, is that, you know, not to say that, hey, if I'm here, how does that exactly affect, um, you know, the EV tasks, you know, or the progress I take, you know, do I, factor the EV progress by 0.9 or whatever. It's not a direct relationship that I'm talking about. It's more of, hey, if in, if your earned value is telling you that your performance is below is uh, um, below plan and your risk is saying that you're you know behind plan and your weight estimate says that you're behind plan. Well, they're kind of telling you the same thing, right? So they're, it's telling you a consistent story. But if the earned value says that I'm behind plan, or, or let, let's say it's, it's, it's on track, the typical is, is that people overestimate um, how well they're doing early in the program. And so your earned value says, hey, I'm doing good. I'm right on plan, you know, plus or minus a percent or something. But if I take a look at my handful of risks, most of them are outside of this envelope. You know, there I'm not the tasks that I'm doing to burn that risk down are not working. And so I'm not burning that risk down or the TPM, the tasks that I'm doing to achieve, you know, a, a lower weight is, is not working. And my current estimate at this point is outside of plan. Well, that would be a trigger to me as a program manager is to say, well, how how can the technical tasks that we're doing to mature the risk and mature the technical um, uh, be on track, but neither the risk or the technical are actually on track. And so that would be an indicator to look into what, why is that, you know, what, what's the real root cause and what's going on, um, that sort of thing. And so that's why it's important to look at an integrated picture as opposed to, if you just look at these cost schedule curves and, you know, and, and they're driven by the technical progress that's achieved here, um, you you can miss um, uh, an opportunity to uh, to tweak or, or manage your program uh, better. Um, and you know I chose risk and TPMs, uh, but there's software measures um, that 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 software people take uh, independent of cost schedule. There's quality measures that that the quality folks look at independent of cost and schedule. They all have their own basis for what does a successful program look like at this point in time. And so that integrated dashboard needs to include all of those views so that one can truly assess whether um, because if, if there's a major disconnect somewhere, well, then there might be some good reason for that, but you ought to know why uh, that sort of thing. Questions? Told you this was going to be short and hopefully going to hopefully drive some discussion. All right. Steve Wake has his hand up. Oh, Steve. Hi, Gordon. Um, hey. uh, yeah, yeah, well, a, a fine review. One thing that we have biting at our heels as, as EVM practitioners in the UK is something called data analytics. Um, I, I don't know, or I wonder whether it, it's kind of the same in the US, but data analytics is the current solution to the universe at the moment. Right, uh, it's, right. fla it's flavor of the month. Yeah, big data. And, and, and I wondered, whether you had, and when it came over the hill, um, just after Agile went away a little bit, it was it was uh, touted as, there was much talk about it, but very little indication of how you really used it and what it was really for. 
and uh, but it attracts great crowds right. at the moment. Maybe because they still haven't come up with the answer. But I, I felt rather smugly and complacently that if you do earn value well uh, and you have a, a good system and it uh, you've taken on all the benefits such as uh, enforcing great great practice discipline. Um, you, you have data coming out of your ears to be able to, 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 to manage well. You know, it was that transformation, if you like, of C-Spec into EVMS, and, uh, if you remember, which was to, to, make, to make it management-oriented, the information, rather than just reporting. Right. And I, I wonder whether, you know, so, so I keep, you know, I, I kind of say to people, well, if you do earn value, you're doing probably most of what data analytics promises to do anyway. You've got so much data at your disposal, and particularly if you're keeping a record of it and uh, creating benchmarks and, uh, and other kinds of assessments. So, where would you say, the real question was, where does EVM fit and, and this uh, measurement analysis fit within, within uh, uh, the, the framework of data analytics? Do you think it engulfs it? Is it part of it? What's its place? Uh, so can everybody mute, please? Uh, Andre is Andre is not muted. Andre Felipe. Andre, you yeah. mind muting, please? Um, so yeah, good good question. Uh, let me let me take a stab at it. And I know that Nick has um, uh, Pisano has uh, some even more detailed uh, views on this. But um, so so based on you know as fact is you know let's let's just take the statement earn value. Um, Don Wright uh, can provide you with, um, you know, most of the data analytics you need to manage a program. Um, I, I'm not, I, I, I'm not sure I fully agree with that, and this is why. So, for example, um, the uh, the design engineers are are doing, you know, CAD models um, uh, and 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 that sort of thing, and they're creating all kinds of data with with where they're at with that. Um, the electrical engineers are, you know, laying out um, uh, PCB boards, that sort of thing, and there's all kinds of data they're collecting with that, um, you know, on and on. And so the first point of data analytics would be to, if all of that data was electronic, to have that be integrated uh, and to come together so that you could do some cross kinds of things with cost and schedule, right? Because what Earn Value does is it says, that PCB board is done, right? Or, or the, or, or there's a task in there that says PCB board complete. Well, and then it says okay, 100% complete. But the details of how complete, or the parameters of 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 what that PCB board looks like, you know, or did are all the vias uh, defined? Are they, you know, have they actually uh, have a couple of uh, areas that are not quite connected? You know, what's the tolerance for claiming 100%? But that data is available, and so if those electronic systems can, you know, share that data, and then you can look at it in in multiple ways. Um, you know, one example might be that you've got in, instead of a WBS that looks like a, a spreadsheet, you've got one that looks like the system, and and you highlight, um, you know, the area in red. You say if you've got an aircraft, and you highlight the mission computer and where it's located. You click on that thing, and then it expands not only the cost schedule, but then you can go take a look at the the, the current state of the drawings, the actual drawings that are out of the three D, um, you know, models that are being done by the engineers. You know that, and and BIM in construction is is a protocol that kind of does that sort of thing. The next step of of data analytics is that I think that is uh, that people struggle with even more. Um, you know, it, there's always that story of how you know, Target was using data analytics to basically analyze uh, purchases of uh, of people, and and they could predict when women were pregnant before the women even knew it by based on what they were buying, um, and and so that's that level of data analytics is taking a set of on you know seemingly unrelated set of data and trying to make some correlations. To see if um, if you can learn something, you know, wildly different, that sort of thing, and I think that's the part that people struggle with the most. But they still struggle with even within a program, um, uh, you know, trying to electronically share and and make um, uh, you know correlations and assessments um, across a program. Uh, Nick, do you have anything to add to that? Well, 
you know, what we've been doing in terms of data analytics. I mean, that analytics is just the use of, you know, the um, information that we're collecting across the program management life cycle that results from the performance of the work or the execution of the program, right? So, you know, traditionally, you know, years ago, and, and to a certain extent today, the concept of IPM is, you know, cost, schedule, and risk integration, but really, you know, that really doesn't get to the heart of program management in many cases when it comes to talking to the program manager. So to give you one, just one example, or I'll, I'll give you two examples of areas that really are important to a program manager. Uh, the first one, you know, to go back to systems engineering and technical performance, you know, from our experience um, and in collecting the data for uh, some of our clients, what we have found is that changes to requirements, uh, particularly the requirements documents and systems engineering, give you a pretty early warning as to program growth and um, how impacts will occur down the line in schedule and cost. So, you know, if you think about program management in terms of flow, then, you know, what you're looking for in terms of data analytics and integration is the earliest indication of something happening. So just by tracking changes to the systems engineering specifications and the documents that underlie what defines done. Right. Provide you with a pretty good indication that, you know, depending upon <clears throat> the contextualization of that data, but it gives you a pretty good idea of, you know, what's driving the program and what's driving program execution. The other part, um, you know, that I worked on manually years ago, which we're just now getting to digitize, is, um, per, you know, financial management related to program execution. So, you know, in DOD, it's a little bit different, right? DOD. I don't know if you have the same thing, Steve, over in the UK, but you know, in the United States, we we have what we call colors of money. They're types of appropriations, and they have different expiration dates, and they can be applied to different aspects of the program. So, from a business management perspective, really, what it comes down to is cash flow. If you begin to experience a lot of technical growth in systems engineering, but no one has resourced those changes. Our analysis can show where, you know, where the pitch, when and where the pigeons are going to come home to roost if no one anticipated that that additional work is probably going to cost additional money. Or whether we're going to have the right type of money when we begin to experience risk in particular aspects of the program, particularly as, you know, as it relates to technical performance, the technical achievement. Earned value comes at the end of that cycle. The earliest indication is in systems engineering changes, technical performance risk, schedule impact, and then at the end of the line, cost impact and earned value management. Now, you know, for years, EVM was the best we could do in terms of tech, you know, in terms of performance management. So it's, it's no critique of EVM. It's a necessary analysis that has to be done in order to determine what the financial impact will be and the financial value of the work that has been accomplished. But absent these other indicators, you're really not aware from a program man management perspective, whether you're executing program. And really at, you know, at the end of the day, when I went to briefings at the Pentagon, or, you know, I mean, I, I worked on the PEO staff at NAVAIR, and we would have our program management reviews. The basic question that the program manager has to answer is, are you executing program? And are you gonna be able to execute program 
this fiscal year? Are you going to be able to meet your technical performance parameters? And are you going to be able to deliver the end item application to the fleet on time and within your budget? And if not, why? And those are just, you know, just the very basic questions. Now, the way that we get to that answer requires, you know, effective analysis. And, you know, now, yeah. that, we, now that we can collect larger, you know, broader and deeper data sets using technology, it, it isn't the fact that, you know, we want to expose all of that underlying data. Right there, you know, there is a difference between data collection and transformation and data reporting. So I, I, I think that it, it is a conceptual issue. Yeah. Because, you know, the, the, the traditional view has been that collecting data is, report, is reporting, but it really isn't. Actually, right. what occurs is that the better and more complete data sets that you are able to collect, incorporate, and integrate, the fewer indicators that you need to concentrate on and report on. Right. Yeah, no, that you raise a good point there, Nick. You know, I mean, it, the, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, say, okay, I, I, you know, I'm doing earned value. I've got a report over there. It has a bunch of information in it. Um, but uh, a lot of times they, they don't actually, uh, do analytics on it and and then try to say okay what is that data telling me uh, but yeah so thank you um so can you still guys still all see my screen oh jay oh. um you you have your hand up jay goldberg yeah there we go okay yeah uh, can you hear me now okay. yep yeah i was going to just say that um like a lot of this discussion kind of highlights the fact that um, the EVM person isn't just a financial geek. Um, you, you really need to understand technically what's going, how, how the program's supposed to work and, and you know, what's going on in the program. And, you know, be, be, because if you're, I mean, you, ideally you're measuring, like is the, is you, what you're measuring is, is the program meeting its defined goals and milestones. And, and, and I mean, you need, you need to be able to, um, well indicate in 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 the calculations whether it is or not and, and to what extent it is and um but um <clears throat> no, I, I mean you know, there's just also you need to like be able to to like pull in all of that data and understand like how it how it works and you know the and in are are they are they well working to the program yeah no that's a good point yeah, thanks. Um, Alan, did you have a, a comment? Yeah, uh, Nick Nick covered a lot of ground there. Some uh, a lot a lot of which uh, I identified with. But what what I was just trying to understand, I'm, and perhaps I've taken this on incorrectly, w w w was Nick saying that EVM is really there to drive primarily to drive the financial performance of a program um, because if the, the, the other big thing for me is is the EVM it tells you you're going late but it doesn't tell you what to do differently right. or how to do it differently exactly. now you know we, 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 we've we, we, we're actually working in in uh, wind data analytics at the minute and the thing that we're looking at is you know helping people to execute programs faster and I think there needs to be an element of trust in the program management community, particularly with big complex programs, you know, air systems, uh, na 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 naval systems programs. The bottom line is what you really want to do is mature the design early and avoid technical change where you can. Uh, but particularly when you get into construction, which is often where the high spend is, is you 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 want to. You want to drive the execution and focus on reducing the schedule, and that in itself will bring in the cost. Right. Now, I would then question how much earned value do you need to help you do that? I, I personally am a believer that you, you shouldn't implement earned value 
broadly across 100% of a programme, you should put it into selected areas and you should use different techniques which could be better to help you reduce the schedule in 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 other critical areas that are needed. Right. No, I that you, that, Alan. That's a that's a great point. I mean, earned value to me is is not is is not a driver. Earned value is 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 what you do to model um, what's really happening. So, for example, let's take your. Um, um, your thing that you want to reduce the schedule and you want to do things uh, in a way that allows you to do that. Earn value in itself is not going to do anything for you. you. You can capture the plan after the fact and then track against that plan. But what's going to what's going to affect your ability to do it faster is making sure you're working on the right things um, first, right? The things that need to be worked on. Um, if you're working on the, the, you know, trying to do something that really doesn't need to be done until you know six months from now, and you're not doing something that needs to be done today in order to integrate with that six month. So, it, you know, the making it shorter, faster is, is all about the technical plan and trying to prioritize and that sort of thing. Once you do all those decisions, earn value can help you. Uh, you, you model it right with the cost and schedule, and you track against that plan. Um, you know whether you know wh whether you can run a program where you do um, earn value. Oh, we're trying to get you back in the meeting. Hello, am I not out of? Oh, okay. I think I left the meeting for a second. But um, where you can do pieces of, of earn value and, and not pieces, um, you know that that happens sometimes. You know that kind of thing. Uh, I. I'm not such a stickler with the mechanics of earned value where, um, you know, um, I agree with you that the way you track costs and schedule and technical performance on different areas of the program is wildly different and needs to be. Um, uh, and in general, you know, um, uh, I think that's, you know, earned value, but um, but that's a lot larger question. Um, as far as technical uh, tracking, technical things, that sort of thing, I, I do have a um, I have a little game I want to play here. So uh, let me see. Can can you see this chart with a bunch of boxes? Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's just assume that this bunch of boxes uh, is a set of um, components that, cre that that create an overall system, right? And let's assume that each one of these boxes are um, uh, products that would manifest in a WBS as a separate leg of the WBS, right? Traditionally, you know, each of these boxes would kind of, you know, design, uh, you know, requirements, design, build, and test sort of independently, and then at the end they would in try to integrate all that kind of thing. So what I'm talking about here is uh, is 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 playing around with with agile and, and see what. Um, See that that's and so what agile does is is at the system level, they're looking for. Um, let's see here, let's see if I can get. Point to point, they're looking for end to end capability, right? You know, um, I don't know if it's a. If it's a workstation, you know, the ability to um enter uh you know log in for example something silly but it's an end-to-end -end thread and in order to um and so this is like a capability behavioral thread that might get dis de defined at the very you know uh, a user entered capability that you would want to make sure you meet but what happens is that each one of these boxes needs to provide just a little bit of their respective capability to that to roll up into that overall capability. I try to draw lines, but I probably get. But do you know what I'm saying? And, and so it and so you're, you're not really building the system box by box. You're building the system capability by capability where these boxes are getting um, implemented incrementally and you're discovering what those boxes look like as opposed to predefining. What 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 I'm finding is, is that this whole connection between these capabilities and flow down into you know what the agile does to discover these and then the ability to reassess at the user level um 
that system engineering, uh, I think uh, SAFE calls it architectural um, runway. You know, you, you define enough of the architecture so you know which capabilities. But this is sort of the same concept is, is that, you know, what does it mean to be done here? How do you roll that stuff into capabilities? And, and oh, by the way, you are doing tasks, uh, agile tasks in each one of these things, and you are having, you know, micro level results and and you have actuals um and and you can collect progress on these things and this little bit of progress this little bit this you know rolls up to the progress on this overall capability um thoughts again i'm just throwing stuff on paper here again not everybody at once you know this just gets a little i don't have complete thoughts about this gordon but i want to go back just to a quick thing what alan said and what nick said um okay. i would be i would be interested because i'm actually working on a data analytics cert certification right now um and we have a focus here i support the faa we actually have a focus here on creating dashboards that tie together EVM, ebm and data analytics because we do program level EVM here and EVM is not applicable across an entire program. So we sort of have to look at other measures to be able to see the efficacy of the program and where it's going. So I would be curious of what resources are out there that I can investigate to see where these things, you know, couple and marry up together. Um, that's just putting that out there. I would love to some suggestions on that. Well, Gordon, uh, this is Nick again. Just just uh, just a point of clarification also. So um, I'm based on what Steve indicated. You know, it's it's I'm not saying that earned value is a financial measure because it's not. It's a cost measure. And, and there's a slight difference to that. You know, in. Um, it's, it's more of a, I guess, a technical definition, but, you know, it's significant. So a financial measure is one that deals with cash flow. And the availability of funding, your cost measure um, in terms of earned value makes a determination as to the value of the work that has been performed based upon your plan. So that's the slight difference there. Now, when it comes to integration, Wendy, of data analytics with earned value, you know, this a lot of this is unexplored territory, and we're we're doing it, uh, we're doing it for NASA doing it for Space Force, we're doing it for some other areas right now. Um, you know, what we want to be able to do is make the data comprehensible and not be obscured through, you know, jargon and uh, analysis that, you know, doesn't really provide clarity to the program team. So what we found is that, you know, if we view the program management system as a closed loop system. You have your program goals. You have your exit criteria. Um, everything has to relate back to your exit criteria and your program goals. And, um, you know, in some cases, I think even over at FAA, which you discussed, we do have a couple of programs that we support at FAA. Um, you know, what we do in, in that particular case is, um, you know, we're, we're looking to determine at what point the program goes to say cost share, if it's that type of program, right? Okay. So you have, you have a new technology or a new innovation that industry is developing. They may, um, they may pony up the initial funding. There may be a little bit of effort on the part of the government, right? Uh, you know, through um, co a collaborative effort. And then, uh, so, you know, you're very heavy. And, and this also goes back to Steve, because Steve, we, we began life in this company supporting uh, oil and gas and large construction, particularly oil platforms and so forth and shut down turnarounds. So, you know, earn value essentially in the large construction and oil and gas world is really done at the work package level when it is applied. Of course, you don't apply earn value to everything because you have LOE and other activities that just don't lend themselves to, you know, to that, that type of assessment. We're, but, we're, I'm sorry. We're, we're coming up at the end of the hour here. So, yeah, just give you a chance to wrap up here, Nick. 
all right, I, I'm going to wrap up. But anyway, you know, the, the point is, or the point that I was getting to is that if you look at program management as a system and you integrate your data analytics with your earned value, usually you can um, tie that back into your program goals. And, and that's what we're doing for those programs. Thank okay, you. Thank you. So, so Steve, in, in 30 seconds, can you introduce um, what's going to happen next week? And then I've got a couple of uh, closing comments. OK, very briefly. Thank you, Nick, for your thoughts on that. I, I would tend to think of that as the absolute requirement to run an enterprise using portfolio philosophies to be able to embrace all of those things. But I absolutely agree that you, that you should have that, that that sort of funding cash flow perspective to really drive the enterprise. Now, uh, hopefully on the call is Karen Thompson from Bournemouth University, who is actually going to tell us about next week's programme which very conveniently is about systems thinking. Well, indeed, I'm listening to thank you very much indeed for a great session, um, Gordon. And I yeah. think next week's will build very nicely on that because what we want to share with you, I'm going to get together with my co-collaborator or co-founder of Responsible Project Management. But what we want to talk about specifically is systems thinking for project sort of decision making. So I think that might be one of the missing pieces of the jigsaw that will be um, dovetail very nicely with what you've covered today. So I don't think I've got time to say any more than that. So you have to come back next week to hear all about systems thinking in project management absolutely and we'll be sending those links out um, uh, uh, tomorrow so um, okay so uh, what I'm planning on doing is is I'm going to start a, a discussion thread on LinkedIn uh, you know I'll, I'll put a link to this uh, video and then I'll also just kind of pose a couple of uh, questions and and you know uh, just kind of get a, a discussion thread going and getting you know some interaction um, and then collecting more thoughts uh, about this um, this particular topic. So uh, thank you all for, for joining and for uh, contributing. Um, any last chance for a question before we close out? All right, guys, thank you very much. And uh, I look forward to uh, further discussion. Thank you. We're going to Thanks officially for end today, but if people want to hang on and, and informally discuss uh, that, that would be fine as well.